Greetings ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Sabbath day, blessed Sabbath day, welcome to our Bible study once again. Welcome Elder Mumba. Thank you so much, you. blessed Sabbath day, thank you viewers. Thank you, thank you, so thank you Elder. Elder, you are going to offer the beginning prayer before we start our lesson today. Let us kneel down and pray. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, who dwells above in heaven, creator of the heavens and earth and everything which is in. Lord, we humble ourselves this afternoon of the Sabbath to worship you and to honor you. We pray that, Lord, may this lesson is going to learn today be a fruitful one to us and to the viewers. We pray that the Holy Spirit shall guide us. Open our hearts and our minds to receive your word and learn from your feet. We pray that, Lord, the Holy Spirit shall guide us from the starting of this program and to the end. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving our hearts. Amen. Amen. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's, once again, Bible study. Elder, thank you for that lovely and uh, blessed prayer. Today we're going to deal with a very, very important topic, health reform. That's the topic, Elder? Yes. All right. Elder, you can introduce the topic. All right. This afternoon, Sabbath, viewers, brothers and sisters, we are going to discuss the health reform. Why the health reform? It is because our Seventh-day Adventists, we have a message which is coming from the Revelation 14, verse 7, 8, 9, which is the three angels' message, and the fourth one in Revelation 18, verse 4. So this message, it, it works together. It works together with the health reform. And we are going to give you the quotations from the prophet, which proves that, that the health reform message, it is needed now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Elder. Elder, we have an issue. Oh, sorry, I'll pull the mic a little bit. I feel more comfortable. Yes. We have an issue where we have the, the problem of reformation, Elder. At the end of the world, Elder, where we are, and viewers and listeners here, we have to be totally reformed away from our dirty habits so that we are perfectly resembling the character of Jesus Christ. Remember? All those who are going to receive the seal of the living God are those who reflect the character of Jesus. So if you still have a stain with you, Elder, it means that you will not receive the seal of the living God. Dress reform, health reform, very, very important. I want us to go back to the Garden of Eden. The origin of sin, it was food. If we ate the food, the fruit, that's health reform. Coming to Esau and Jacob, they had an issue. Esau was weak in terms of appetite. So Jacob and the devil took advantage of that and they sinned and deceived uh, their father Isaac, who was supposed to give the birthright to the firstborn and Jacob got it. It was food. When we come again to Jesus Christ as he was being tempted in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights of fasting and praying, there was a problem of food. The devil had to come back to test Jesus, the first temptation was turn these stones into bread and eat. At the end of the world where we are, my dear brothers and sisters, it is the issue of food. The National Sunday Law or the Mark of the Beast, the 666, will be centered around the belly. Those of us who are not practicing temperance today are going to be tempted to want to eat. For the want of food, many will receive the Mark of the Beast. Elder. Thank you so much. And before we begin to dive into the quotation of Sister White, first let's go back to the Bible and read one verse, I'm sure one or two, then we see how the Bible God is telling us. Okay, I'm going to read First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16, the Bible says, no, ye not that ye, ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Okay, so we are told that our body is the temple of God. That is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit dwells in us. So by Holy Spirit dwelling in us, we are not supposed to defile the body. 
the body should be kept according to the command of God himself. Because we know that we are the temple of God. Okay. So, let's again go to 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31, the Bible says, Whether therefore he ate or drink or whatsoever he do, do all to the glory of God. Okay. So again, we are told that this food we are giving us, we need to eat to glorify God himself. We shouldn't just be eating anyhow. It's supposed to be proper according to God himself, so that we are harmony with the word of God. Okay, so this health reform is connected to the three angels' message. Okay, so let's dive it again to the quotation of our prophet Ellen White. So we are going to read the book from Testament to the Church, Volume 3, page 161 and 62. Okay, so we are going to just pick the, a few information from there. The quotation says, I was again shown that the health reform is one branch of the great work which is to fit to people for the coming of the Lord. It is as closely connected with the third angel's message, okay, as the hand is with the body. Okay, so let's pause there. The health reform message is connected to the three angel's message, just like the hand with the body. So we can't separate these two things. When you separate, which means the whole message of three angels' message, which we have preached it halfway. So when you put the three, the health reform in it, then it is a complete message which is going to go to the world, to you brothers and sisters and me here. Okay, so it continues. The law of the Ten Commandments has been lightly guided by man, but the Lord would not come to punish the transgressors of the law without first sending them a message of warning. Okay? So we are given a warning message because God is going to judge. First of all, he can't just come and judge us minus giving us the warning. Remember Amos 3 verse 7 God will not first destroy his people. Mm -hmm. He starts first giving what? The warning message. Mm -hmm. And those who are going to reject that message, it will be their doom. That is the, how important the health reform is. My elder. Thank you, Rida, my leader, my elder. Yeah, we have an issue, my dear brothers and sisters, where if we ignore entirely the health reform, it means that our minds or our brain cells will be denumbed uh, and will not be able to reason according to the way we're supposed to be reasoning. What we eat affects our reasoning capac capacities and capabilities. What you take in as your food either makes you a junk head or an intelligent being. That has been proven scientifically to be correct. Now, health reform becomes cardinal and important if we want to be able to observe and obey the holy law of God, the statute of God, the precepts of God. If we fail, my dear friends, to obey the Ten Commandments of the Living God, it means we will not receive the seal of the Living God. It means we will fail the judgment. Remember, in the most holy place where God is, is in judgment, He's using the Ten Laws, the Ten Commandments that he wrote with his own finger on Mount Sinai and delivered to the children of Israel and said, For all generations, this law shall not pass away. The law of God, the Ten Commandments of God, define the character of, of God. And if we fail to abide by the Ten Commandments of God, then we fail the judgment and we are going straight to hell. Now, how is health reform and what we eat and our appetite and our lack of temperance affect our abiding to the Ten Commandments of God. Let us read this citation here. Those who transgress the laws of God 
in their physical organism, meaning you're not taking care of your body, will not be less slow to violate the law of God spoken from Mount Sinai. Those who will not, after the light has come to them, eat and drink from principle, instead of being controlled by appetite, will not be a tenacious okay, in regard to being governed by principle in other things. The agitation of the subject of reform in eating and drinking will develop a character and will unerringly bring to light those who make a god of their bellies. Very, very important citation here from Health Reformer, and uh, that is August 1, 1866, paragraph 6. Very, very important. My dear brothers and sisters, if we fail to control our bellies, our stomachs, and our appetite, we cannot manage to keep the Ten Commandments of God. Hence, we fail the judgment and will be candidates to be where the gods will be placed on the left-hand side and to thrown to the pit of the lake of fire. Here they have something. All right. Okay, thank you so much. And le okay, let's go again, divert and to another quotation from the prophet. Yeah. yeah, this book is the Selected Message, Volume 3, page 83, paragraph 4 and 5. Okay, the quotation says, This is just a certain design it should be, and those who have been preparing the way for the people to pay no heed to the honey and reproof of the testimony of this Spirit of God, you will see that a tide of error of all kinds will spring into life. They will claim scripture as their evidence and deception of Satan is very, is Satan in every form, every form will be, will prevail. Okay, it continues. Men may get up scheme after scheme and the enemy will seek to seduce souls from the truth. But all who believe that the Lord has spoken through Sister White and has given her a message will be saved from the main delusion that will come in these in these last days. Okay? So many people they are saying, okay, but we are giving this from God because when you read in Leviticus 11, the whole chapter, God is talking about you what type of animal we should eat and which type of animal we should not eat. Mm -hmm. Yes. So many people they are just stuck from me to say no because the Bible is saying. But remember, God has given us the present truth, which the prophet says in L writing 63.3 to say the, the present truth is the message which we need now. So we need to obey what the prophet is saying to us. We shouldn't rely on the things which is past, which is old. We need to have a new information because from 1844 up to the second coming of Jesus Christ, he has given us a new message. Okay. So this health reform message, it is the strategy now, now. Uh -huh. It is from the beginning. Adam and Eve, they disobeyed because of eating. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so let's go to the Genesis. Genesis 3, verse 1, to read, to see what happened there. Genesis 3, starting reading from verse 1, maybe you will see, maybe you will come to end up to verse 6. Okay, the Bible says, Genesis 3, verse 1, the Bible says, Now the serpent was more so subtle than any beast of the field, than the, which, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the women, Yea, as God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the women said unto the serpent, We may eat of all, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but on the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall he touch it, lest he die. And the serpent said unto women, 
he shall, he shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day he ate thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and he shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And six, and when the women saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree of to, de to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did it, and gave also unto her, her, her husband with her, and he ate. Okay? So through the food, Satan tempted Adam and Eve through the food. It is even us now today. We are being tempted to eat what we are not supposed to eat, but God has directed us to say, okay, this is the thing which you need to eat now, the diet, all types of animals, all this and this, we should do it now, we should leave it now, because we are in the judgment process, okay? In the judgment process. Elder, yes. Elder this reminds me of our bad habits as, uh, as parents. You know, as parents, we have very, very bad habits, whereby when we receive guests and visitors in our homes, we want my dear brothers and sisters to make a very, very serious dining table there with all types of foods and meat and, you know, toxic things. We are spoiling our children. We are spoiling our children and remember we are responsible for our children's eternal destiny is either them going to eternal life or eternal damnation. By our health, eating bad habits to satisfy our visitors, we do not want to care about these destinies of our little ones. Just because of visitors, we neglect our children's future destinies. What does the Spirit of Prophecy say about parents and responsibilities? Okay, There never can be a better condition of things until parents understand the obligations resting upon them to bring up their children healthy. It is impossible to conform to the present customs of society and do these customs. There is need of reform. Parents should live more for their children and not so much for visitors, like I just explained. It should not be their study how to furnish a luxurious table to please the appetites of the visitors. By so doing, they tempt their children to eat things which will prove injurious to health and which will encourage and strengthen the animal appetites. You know, mind how she calls these things, animal what? Appetites. And have a direct influence to weaken and debase the higher faculties. So like I said, my, my dear friends, the higher faculties of our brains rely entirely on a, so much on what we eat. What we eat, dear parents, should be controlled. Do not do things, once again I emphasize, to ensure that your visitors are happy. We want when the visitors leave our homes to go out there proclaiming to say that home we visited, they gave us all types of dishes. But you killed the behavior, morale and upbringing of your children. And you see, you are now, your children will go out there. They'll say, no, we, was, we, we, we grew up eating these things, so it's okay for us to eat these things. And they will be eating very toxic things that will benumb their mental faculties, like we have read in the citations. And doing that, my dear friends, makes them to make errors in decisions which pertain to the keeping of the precepts of the Almighty God. Elder, you have something to say there? Yes, okay. Uh... Again, first let's go to the Bible to read another Bible verse which is coming from Exodus 16, verse 2 and 4. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would, would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the, by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to, to the full, for he have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill 
this whole assembly with hunger. Okay, so you see, even in the Old Testament, the children of Israel, they murmured in the wilderness to say, you Moses, why are you brought us here? Because in Egypt where we are, we were eating a good food, okay, flesh, meat, whatever. We were at least, but now we are bringing us here in the wilderness to get, to just feed us here with nothing, with this manna. Okay, so when he, he, the children of Israel murmured, God hungered upon the children of Israel. Even today, we are told that now we need to leave this type of food mm -hmm. and we continue with this one. So when you, we murmured again, which means we are going back where? Egypt. In Egypt. Mm -hmm. Instead of going to Canaan, now it's not a physical Canaan, it is heavenly Canaan now, spiritually. So we are in the Exodus, okay? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Yes, yes. So we need to obey what the spirit of prophecy is saying to us because we are in this journey. So even when we say, ah, no, 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 me, I can't eat this animal, this meat is good, whatever, these chickens and whatever, the pork, whatever, which means spiritually we are in Egypt. Yes. So we need to cut forward to cross the Red Sea and we are in the wilderness now, going where? In the heavenly Canaan. So when we are in this journey, God is providing, is giving us what we need to eat. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow, thank you, Elder. Thank you. Very, very important, Elder. I wanted to cut you short, but you have mentioned everything I wanted to mention. People are stuck, Elder. They don't want to move ahead to leave those habits that they have been addicted to. Some other bad habits, my dear brothers and sisters, that we might be addicted to are habits on sitting postures, how you sit. You know, you sit, you're supposed to sit chest out, stomach in, okay, back in. Now, you find people having back out, chest in, stomach out. Sitting posture matters. And even when you're eating, this posture matters because the digestion of the food will move swiftly and accurately and the way it's supposed to move if your sitting posture when you are eating is well done. Remember, you cannot eat healthily while you are sleeping. I know a person who died who was trying to eat while he was sleeping on his bed and he died. He got choked. The food went into the windpipe. So the way we sit our postures the way we walk our postures, we should mind the way we do these things. Let me just give you one of the citations that was an experience with our prophet on the sitting postures and how they affect our health reform. Okay, she, in this citation, she's talking about a, a lady who was a tailor. You know, tailors, they sit. Most of us, in fact, 90% of the people who are watching here and uh, those of us who are here with us in the the place where we're doing our Bible study, we have, we sit most of the day, Elder. Most of the jobs sit, but I know your job, Elder, is more, you know, standing, and even my job, the job that I do away from preaching, we, but most of our colleagues sit during most of the times of the day, their offices, where they go. So please mind your sitting postures. So in uh, Sister White's experience, the prophet's experience here, they had a lady who was a tailor, tailor's seat, elder, and they are making clothes and doing things. So her sitting posture affected her health reform, and this was the counsel and the experience of the prophet. Let's read together. A dressmaker, while engaged in sewing, okay, at the Health Reform Institute at Battle Creek, was observed to sit without supporting her back against the chair. You see, when you sit without supporting your back on the chair, you should balance these things. She showed signs of great weariness and was asked to make her position more comfortable. She answered that she could not lean back against the chair for the, for the pannier that she wore would press upon her back and cause her great pain. Again, the way you dress affects everything. So she was in tight, tight things. The pads were examined and found to be hard and unyielding. So put on dresses that are loose. They were made very stiff that they might not lose their form and bulk. This instrument of torture 
this lady wall over the kidneys and spine and the pressure upon the nerves was so severe that it was almost beyond endurance. Very, very, very good lesson here we are learning, my dear friends, Elder. We are learning that dress reform is related to health what? Reform. Dress reform is related to health reform. This woman had the wrong sitting posture because she wanted to support the dress that she was wearing. It was too tight. So now that affected her kidneys and all those things, the health reform, my dear friends, should be very, very considered. Elder, you have something? Oh, yes. Okay. So we have heard what our evangelist is saying. Please take note and follow exactly what the Spirit of Office is telling us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, let's read another quotation, which is coming from the Child Guidance, page 383, paragraph 2 and 3. Among those who are waiting for the coming of the Lord, Meat eating will eventually be done away. Mm. Flesh will cease to form a part of their diet. We should ever keep this end in view and in order to work steadily towards it. I cannot think that in the practical of flesh eating, we are in harmony with the light which God has been pleased to give us. Okay? So God is saying now, we should be done away with meat eating. Mm. Okay. Mm. Why? It is because we are in the, we are in the Exodus. Yeah. We are in the wilderness now, spiritual wilderness. Mm -hmm. In the wilderness, we are just, the children of Israel, we are given manna. a manna. Mm. Yes. So even as, from 1844, God enters into the most holy place to do the judgment. Okay. So we are in the judgment process. God is judging us. So we need to listen and follow what the prophet is saying us. Mm -hmm. But if you keep mama into say, ah, I can't leave you, this the pork is nice, the beef, the chicken and whatever. But it is God who's giving us this information. Mm. If you love him, you need to obey him. Exactly, Elder. Yes. It reminds me of these people who disregard the health of, the, the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy is actually God's word given to the prophet. So if we are going to hate the spirit of prophecy and say that me, I do not want to listen to the uh, writings of Sister White, but I just want to listen to the writings of the Bible, then my dear friends we do not qualify to enter the pearly gates of heaven because we just want certain parts of the writings of God. Actually, Elder, these people this the inspiration calls them idiots. And we know inspiration is God's word given to his prophet. These are idiots. So if you are in the category where you are rejecting health reform, you are an idiot. No, people are going to say he's saying he's, he's calling us idiots. Let me actually give you the citations from the prophets. What you say that the prophet is calling you an idiot, then you're going to say God is calling you an idiot. Let's read together. Yes. Our gracious Heavenly Father sees the deplorable condition of men while living in violation of the laws he has established. Like the elder said, the elder said laws are given by God and we should follow. Many are doing this ignorantly. Some, knowing the Lord in love and pity to the race, causes the light to shine upon health reform. He publishes his law and the penalty that will follow the transgression of it, that all may learn and be careful to live in harmony with natural law. He proclaims his law so distinctly and makes it so prominent that it is like a city set on a hill. All accountable beings can understand his law if they will. Idiots, that's the word, idiots will not be responsible. So those of us, my dear friends, who are trying to run away from being called idiots by the word of God, we should be responsible with our health reform. Now, Elder, before you come in, we have an incidence, and you see, precedence is something that we learn from what has happened in the past. Now, what has happened in the past is recorded for us in the word of God. The world ancients, like you, you mentioned, who followed what was written in the word of God. We have Jesus' words in the holy word of God, the Bible. Jesus says, 
that the way it was during Noah's time, during Sodom and Gomorrah's time, those are two incidences where God's wrath destroyed human beings, including babies and old people, so shall it be for us at the end of the world. So if then it was during Noah's time and during the Sodom Sodomish time, what lessons can we learn so that we are not in that group that burned with fire in Sodom and Gomorrah and in the other group that was drowned in the flood? In the flood? What lessons should we learn? Let us read from Spirit of Prophecy. The inhabitants of the Norwegian world were destroyed because they were corrupted through the indulgence of perverted appetite. You see, that, that was the major issue. Sodom and Gomorrah also were destroyed through the gratification of a natural appetite, which benumbed the intellect. The brain is affected. And they could not discern the difference between the sacred claims of God and the, and the clamor of appetite. The latter, which is the clamor of appetite, enslaved them. So appetite has made many people right now where we are to be slaves. The latter enslaved them, that is appetite. And they became so ferocious and bold in their detestable abomination that God would not tolerate them upon the earth. God ascribes the wickedness of Babylon to her gluttony and drunkenness. What a, what a citation we have there. Gluttony, failure to control your appetite, is the problem that the billions of people during Noah's time were killed, is the problem that the probably millions or thousands, thousands of people in Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. Failure to control your appetite. Gluttony, Elder, is a very, very bad disease. Elder, what do you have to say for it? Okay, I yeah, just want to continue the quotation again from the prophet. Child Guidance, page 383, paragraph 3, okay, says, Back to God's design. Okay, and the, the, the quotation says, Again and again, have, I have been shown that God is bringing his people back to his original design. Mm -hmm. That is, not to subsist on the flesh of dead animals. Mm. He would have us teach people to a better way. If meat is discarded, if the taste is not educated in that direction, if a liking for fruits and grains is encouraged, it will soon be as God in the beginning design it should be. It should be. Okay? So what is the quotation it says here that God wants us to get us back to the original diet. Mm -hmm. Remember Adam and Eve. They were at a plant-based diet. Okay? So God again is taking back to the what? to the original diet before sin entered in the world. Because before the sin entered in the world, they were eating fruits. Mm -hmm. okay? But when they disobeyed, they, they break the commandments. All these things come in. Okay. So now, to, for us to go back again to the original diet, we need again to, what? to keep the commandments. Because when you break the commandments, we are moved away. Again, when you want to go back to the original, to the Garden of Eden, we need again to obey the commandments. And God is taking us slowly, slowly back where? To the original diet before sin entered in the world. Mm. Yes. Mm. Okay. Matthew 4, verse 1 to 4, the Bible says, Then when Jesus laid up out of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, and when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterwards hungered. Verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Okay? So, Satan again came to Jesus. Remember when he was baptized, he went to the wilderness. He remained there for 40 days and 40 nights without eating anything. 
So Jesus conquered in our behalf, which is Adam and Eve fell in the garden of Eden. So Jesus came and conquered that temptation and he was fulfilled to conquer that temptation which we are feeling now. So Jesus is one example. He fought the battle for us. So if he was someone who else, he could again feel this temptation. Again, it's, it's about eating. So brothers and sisters, from the starting of this world, from the garden of Eden, it was a food. Jesus, when he came here, he was tempted about food. Again, we are tested again about the same food. So if we say no, because the Viticus is telling us, which means we are not in the present truth believers, but present truth believers, brothers and sisters, we need to obey what the prophet is saying to us. Okay. Maybe you have... Some yes, you my leader, my elder. Thank you. Thank you for those contributions, elder. We should learn a lot of lessons, my dear friends, uh, from health reform. You see, the, the reason why meat eating is not advised for us at the end of the world where we are today is like the elder there gave you some citations which took us back to the children of Israel. The children of Israel, as they were getting out from Egypt where they used to eat a lot of meat, God prohibited them to eat meat as he was preparing them to enter Canaan. He wanted them to be pure, sanctified, and live holy lives. But they rebelled. They had a problem. Because God can never force you. Just like today, we're not going to force you to stop eating meat. No. It is something that your own conscience will tell you to stop eating meat. Now, the question is, why are you stopping us to eat meat? You see, people will say, Jesus elder ate meat. Jesus ate fish. Yes, the Bible says Jesus ate fish. That is in the category of meaty, meaty foods. But that was another phase of the heavenly sanctuary. That is where now health reform and the third angel's message cannot be separated earlier. Jesus ate meat because he was not yet in the most holy what? Place. The sanctuary has got three demarcations. When Jesus lived on this earth, okay, got baptized and ordained to do the ministry by John the Baptist, who ordained him in that baptism, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus worked for three and a half years in the ministry, died on the cross. That was AD 30, 30 what? 34? 34, yes. 34. Is that the same year Stephen was stoned? Yes. I think we had that other Bible study the other time, Elder. So Jesus now went to heaven, but when he went to heaven, he went to the heavenly what? Sanctuary. Our message as present truth is dealing with the heavenly what? Sanctuary. So that is what we define here, the present truth. Present truth basically is where Jesus is. Jesus is no longer on the cross like the Catholics put him hanging on that tree which they call a cross. Our Jesus conquered that cross, resurrected from the tomb on Sunday, and was taken to heaven. He went to heaven to his father, his father who is in the most in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. Now, when Jesus entered heaven, he never went to where his father is in the most holy place. He was still in the holy place. Remember, we do not need the courtyard in heaven because the earthly sanctuary elder had three demarcations. The courtyard is where Aaron's sons and the other priests could receive doves, could receive pigeons, flour, a bull, a goat, a sheep to slaughter for the daily sacrifices. Of It was a very, very busy courtyard. Yes, so Jesus had not yet moved into the most holy place. Now, when once Jesus moved into the most holy place, Elder Mumba, mm -hmm. it means that he could never ever eat meat again or fleshy food. Because the fleshy foods, if we go to the sanctuary, were eaten by the sons of Aaron Elder, who were priests. As you, you take your pigeon, you take your dove, whatever animal, they would slaughter it and they were commanded to eat that meat. But as you go to the holy place, there was nothing like animals there. And the most holy place never had anything like any fleshy food. What was in the most holy place, Elder? There was... Um, the pot of manna. Pot of manna. 
That is, only that, that is the only thing that can be eaten. Yes. So in the most holy place, my dear friends, is not like in the courtyard or any other place of the heavenly sanctuary. In the most holy place, there is no fleshy meat. So we, as present truth, are going in the most holy place because that's where our master is, Jesus Christ. So if we are going in the most holy place to receive the seal of the living God, it means we will not be eating meat. I hope this makes it clear now, Elder, to the people who are saying, why are we not eating meat yet Jesus ate meat? Jesus had not yet entered the most holy what? Place. Yes. When did he actually enter the most holy place, Elder? 1844. 1844. So if you wanted to say Jesus ate meat, go and ask Jesus if he ate meat after he entered the most holy place in 1844. <laughs> now, Elder, Maybe you can have some finishing, finishing, summarizing messages for us. Okay, I um, just want to go again to the quotation from the prophet. Yes. Uh, page, this is uh, Council of Health, page 575, paragraph 2. Okay, the quotation says, Great reform should be seen among the people who claim to be looking for the soon appearing of Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay? So those who are waiting for Christ to appear in the sky, health reform must be done. Okay? It continues. Health reform is to do among our people a work which, is, which it has not yet done. There are those who are to be awake to be danger of meat eating who are still eating the flesh of animals, thus endangering the physical, mental, and spiritual health. Many who are now only half converted on this question of meat eating, we go from God's people to work no more with them. Mm. Okay? So, God, I say now, those who are preparing for Jesus Christ to appear, meat eating must be done away. Mm. And those who are saying, no, as we can't, you split. Mm -hmm. It is the quotation which he says, not me or anyone else, mm -hmm. but it is God who designed that. He knew the future to say, mm -hmm. there will be people who are not going to follow the command. Mm -hmm. They will remain what? In Egypt. So those who are in movement to go to heaven and Canaan must obey the prophet which has given him the God which has given the information to the prophet to us so that we are not moving away this way and this way to this other windows of doctrine because Jesus said so that we need to be careful because there are some doctrine which will be coming okay, to devour the people but us were given a right message and when we hear this type of message we need to share to the neighbor to say no there is this good information which God has given to us. So those who are waiting for Jesus Christ to come, please, meat eating must be done away. There are some categories of meat here. There is white meat, like fish, mm -hmm. yes. So all those are in the category of meat must be done away. We must go back to the original design, which is the plant-based diet. Exactly. Sure, thank you exactly. so much. Thank you, Elder. Thank you, Elder. Thank you. So, Elder, maybe before we finish everything, let me read the citation here, which is actually saying that our bodies are a living temple of the living God. So we need to take care of these bodies, my dear brothers and sisters. Okay, the last citation I'm going to give you for today is, as we finish today, the Apostle exhorts the church, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. So you cannot smoke, you cannot drink alcohol, you cannot drink or take drugs because your body is a living what? Sacrifice. Man then can make the body unholy by sinful indulgences. If unholy, they are unfitted to be spiritual worshippers and are not worthy of heaven. If man will cherish the light God in mercy gives him upon health reform, he may be sanctified through the truth and fitted for immortality. If he disregards light 
and lives in violation of natural law, he must pay the penalty. So my dear brothers and sisters, we have been given the light. We have been given the light, Elder. And it's up to us to either accept this light or deny it. I think the right decision is to accept the light. Yes. It's up to accept the light. We are now in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. So, if we are with Jesus, you remember he says, My sheep hear my voice and follow me. There where I am shall my sheep be also. We are at his feet in the most holy place so that when he presents us to his father, to say, My father, these are my children, I have sealed them. There are 144,000. We are going to stand in front of a holy God without an intercessor, without Jesus there. You cannot eat meat. You will be basically eating greens, a green-based diet. Or greens. Only that. And remember, Elder, that finally, towards the end, before we are translated, we will actually stop eating anything, even these greens which we are talking about. Angels will be feeding us with heavenly food. Actually, it's written in Spirit of Prophecy that they will be bringing us bread and what? And water. Thank you, Elder, for today's lesson. Uh, you wanted to say something before yes, we finish? Yes. Okay. okay. You ask, I just want to share one last quotation which I feel I can mm -hmm. share with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is coming from the Bible Training School, July 1, 1903, or 1902, page 3. Mm -hmm. Okay, the quotation says, At this stage of earthly history, meat eating is dishonoring to God. Mm. You see? Meat eating is dishonoring to God. At this stage we are. Mm. Okay, it continues. It, it is meat eating and liquid drinking that are making the world as it was in the days of Noah. These things are strengthening the lower passion of human being, anim animalizing their race by giving way to base passion. Man is corrupting body, soul, and spirit. The murder committed by man under the influence of strong, strong drink, strong what a crew, satanic spirit, strong drinking inspires in a man. After the liquid drink, after the liquid solid in adulterated, adulterated poison, and these those who drink it are made mad. Okay, we can continue. It is a big paragraph. So the main issue is that this meat eating it is making us to be okay to be corrupted in our mind and thinking whatever. Going back to the, what is happening in the, in the days of Noah. Mm. Yes. The spirit of prophecy is saying to us we need to divert again to stay away from this type of food which we are eating now. It is dangerous to us. God is telling us that it is dangerous. We need to stay away. We need to remain with the food, which it is the best plant diet. Yes, plain mm -hmm. based diet. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is what we need now. Mm -hmm. So, brothers and sisters, take note and obey the spirit of prophecy. If you are not, if you fail to obey the spirit of prophecy, brothers and sisters, we will remain from 1844 downwards. Mm -hmm. But if you obey, you will continue from 1844 up to the coming of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you, Elder. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, dear ladies and gentlemen. Remember that health reform is not just meat eating, tobacco, alcohol, even how you take care of your body. Remember the quotation I just read, which talked about our bodies are a living temple. Our bodies, uh, okay, it says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. So we need to know that we need to bath, keep ourselves clean, have enough air circulation, exercise, health reform goes into all those sections. In fact, as Maranatha is our time, Elder will be starting our health uh, and medical missionary uh, section very, very soon. 
very very soon so watch out for that so that will have actually because it's a very very the ministry the health ministry is a very big ministry we've just tried to summarize it here and uh, basically elder what we can say is that we should respect our bodies offer them as living sacrifices to god because jesus like the elder also mentioned here is has moved from the holy place to the most holy what place in 1844 so let's be where our master is that is what we call present truth so if jesus is in the most holy place and he's about to be to start sealing he has actually started for us the sda church he has started qualifying candidates who receive the seal of the living god the seal of the living god you have to qualify to get it and the procedure has already begun and many are falling away so those of you who are qualifying it means you're already practicing health reform, dress reform, and all the reforms that are necessary so that by the time judgment begins on the living, you would have qualified to receive the latter rain and the seal. So, dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us today. Join us again. Thank you, Elder Mumba. Thank you so much. Thank you. Join us again next week as we continue with our Bible studies on the Sabbath. God bless you. Yes. But before that, Elder, we always kneel down and pray. All right. Yes, let us kneel down and pray. Mighty Father, Lord, who dwells up yonder, thank you for this Sabbath. Thank you for being with us on this Bible study to teach us, Lord, in health reform. Bathing our bodies, avoiding cigarettes, avoiding alcohol, avoiding drugs, being clean eating good food, away from fleshy bad foods and all hazardous foods. Oh Lord, thank you for this lesson. Because Lord, even when you lived on this earth, you never smoked, you never drank, you practiced health reform. And as when you entered the most holy place, all of us, Lord, should change in our characters. Because that's a qualification to receive the seal of the living God. Help us, Lord, to be spotless, so that as you present us in front of God, a holy God without an intercessor will be spotless and will be just like you, reflecting your character. Help us in health reform, Lord, because we are in the most holy place. In the name of Jesus, we pray for all the people who are with us in present truth, who are ever watching our presentations and participating as well in the comment section. Bless them all and their families. Bless us, Lord, in this last movement we are in. In the name of Jesus, our personal Savior, soon to come and reign as King of this earth, we pray. Amen. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Elder. Thank you. Thank you, listeners and viewers. Let's meet next week again. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life when the clouds unfold their wings of strife? When the strong tides lift and the cables strain, will your anchor drift or firm remain? We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll fastened to the rock which cannot move grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love it is safely moored will the storm withstand for it is well secured by the Savior's hand and the cables pass from his heart to mine can defy the blast through strength divine we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll fastened to the rock which cannot move grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. When our eyes behold through the gathering night the city of gold, our harbor bright, we shall anchor fast by the heavenly shore with the storms all past forever. We have an anchor that 
that keeps the soul set fast and sure while the billows roll. Fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love.